I was remembering when I first heard about Sai Baba or first saw Sai Baba as a, an idol. That was in my uh, childhood uh, from a feature film called Amar Akbar Antony. There is a song, Shirdi Wale Sai Baba. Shirdi Wale Sai Baba Aya hai tere dar pe sawali That's the first time I saw the image of Baba and I heard the name Sai Baba. I didn't, I didn't understand anything. I was probably uh, 10 years or 12 years old at that time. So I did not understand Sai Baba, his relevance or anything. But later, uh, when I look back after all these years, when I look back, the spark had started there. The, the idea of Sai Baba was there. But then life took its own course and I went through the usual uh, stages of life. And uh, Baba was not in the picture for me for a long time. Now, um, experience wise, if I think about experiences, Sai Baba has always been there in some form. Like uh, one of the most devastating phase of my life was Amu's death. That was a very, very destabilizing time. And uh, it, was, it was like a bottomless pit, falling into a bottomless pit, that kind of a feeling. So Sai Baba's presence eventually brought me back to a stable position. While I'm talking about Sai Baba, I would like to also think about how Dattatreya tradition came along with it. I did not know anything about Datta tradition. In the south of India, especially in Kerala where I come from, Dattatreya is not known. The tradition is not known. Sri Pada Sri Vallabha is not known. Akalkot Swami is not known. Even Sai Baba was not known until now, until recently. A few years ago, Baba became very popular. The whole idea of Datta tradition and me being a part of that tradition came when I met uh, Bittal Babaji. Exactly on 19th December 2012. Bittal Babaji used to be the pontiff of Sri Pada Sri Vallabha Pidham in Vallabhapuram in Andhra, Andhra Pradesh. So I did not know about him. I went there, taken by somebody. And when I met him in a few seconds, he said, he looked at me and said, oh, precious diamond, come and sit next to me. See, nobody sits next to a pontiff, either behind or in the front on the floor. But he arranged a chair and asked me to sit next to him and honored me. And he gave me the title Raja Rishi, Raja Yogi. So, that was a very uh, important phase of my life and I, I started feeling the presence of Datta in my life. He removed a ring and gave it to me from his hand. That is also a very big recognition from a master of his stature. So again, Dattatreya, Dattatreya tradition, Sai Baba as part of it. Sai Baba is more accessible and more uh, uh, easy to understand and Baba can be like a friend in our house. You know, you feel good to have Baba with us and it's more friendly. His whole approach is like that. So Baba was uh, definitely a part of the whole scenario. But the Tathariya tradition, as a tradition, I started following. Or it came, into, came to me. It came to me or it, it got revived from me, in whichever way you want to see it. Uh, but. Um, one of the major things about Datta tradition is, it is not easy to understand Datta tradition. The path of Avadudas, great masters who have dissolved themselves completely. Or if you want to see or if you want to feel what is an Avaduda, it is like your soul. Your soul is completely unattached to you, just like petrol of the car or electricity, but it activates you. Your soul activates you and the activation is called life. Just like that, Dattatreya is presence. When somebody asked Dattatreya, where can we see you? He said, look into the nature. Just like that, when somebody asked him who you are, 
who are you? He said, I am the nature. And where do you see me? In the nature. That means all the plants, the beings and the everything is Datta. The essence of every being is Datta. It's not easy to follow. And Avadhuta exists like that. Avadhuta life is like that. He is everything. He is in everything. He flows with life. There is no agenda. There is no plan. There is no teaching. You are just being what you originally are. Means your true self, which is the soul. So that idea came. And then the interaction part of it. That is where Sai Baba's presence is a great value. Even today, 100 years after Baba left the body, he works through the Udi, ash, the sacred ash. He works through his presence, through his idols, through his pictures, in every way possible. In every way possible, Sai Baba works in the world. Um, so if people did not understand Sai Baba at the time when he was in the body, people understand Sai Baba now. Sometimes it takes many more generations to recognize a saint of the past. While the saint is in the body, recognition is difficult because there is a character, there is a constitution, there is a form. And people look at the form and say, that form and this form is same. Or me and I, he is same. Or we are same. But that's not the truth. The truth is the consciousness that's operating in the body. The same consciousness operates as a soul or energy in a, in a cat's body, a dog's body and a human body. But expressions are totally different. And while in a human body, this consciousness works as a great master or a criminal or a... Or a uh, uh, judge or a doctor or engineer, whatever his professions are, or in different levels they operate. But it's the same source, same soul, same consciousness. So you can't really look at Sai Baba and say, I understand him. It is not possible to understand such people. Great masters, they are purpose driven, completely purpose driven. They took birth because of a purpose, not for a karmic fulfillment. They don't have any karmic agenda in their whole, whole life. There's no fulfillment of karmic nature. So what they're what they here for? To add value to earth, to bring back dharma, 